Welcome everyone to Ask Me Anything. Um, before, I guess we're starting, Peter, um, what's up with those glasses? Ah, the glasses. These are one of my two favorite sets of glasses that I like to wear when I'm looking at electronics in the evening. Um, this brand, uh, which I am neither sponsored by nor receive any compensation from, but I do fancy, is called Gunner, G-U-N-N-A-R. And I've, I went through a bunch of these before deciding on the, that these are the ones I liked uh, more than the others. I started out with gaming glasses first, and I just didn't find that I had enough sort of coverage. So for whatever reason, these um, optics are the ones I like the most. Um, they have a ton of stuff on there, and I they're not that expensive, and they usually have sales. So um, when they have a sale, I recommend buying like two or three pair and then you know figure out which one you're going to like the most. Um, there's another brand that I like whose name I'm blanking on now. Um, that's not a gunner, but it's, 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 it's a pretty solid brand. It's a, it's about twice as expensive though. Um, with these guys, you're into about 40 bucks. Um, the main issue is if you can remember to do so putting these on once the sun goes down, as you're looking at electronics, huge difference. Um, especially for computer. So I'm more of a laptop guy than I am a phone guy. And I'm, I'm usually working on a computer. I don't know, till at least an hour before bed, unfortunately. And this is key. Whereas on the phone, there is a uh, setting that like renders the phone completely red or completely gray, which is different from just the usual light setting on the phone. And that usually is more than adequate than, than um, needing these glasses. Hmm. And on the laptop too, at least for the Mac, they have the F-Lux, yeah. which will take the light down. And that's pretty good. I do that as well. I kind of view the glasses as an insurance policy. And I definitely notice a difference in my sleep quality, um, at least objectively and sometimes subjectively uh, based on my remembering to do that. And there are times I just, I don't know, I space, I don't do it. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to bed having just been blasted by that light. It sort of sucks. Do we want to explain what's actually going on with when you're wearing blue blockers. It's probably taking us back a little bit with the, the glasses, but what is it actually doing? It actually seems like it's one of those hacks, for lack of a better term, that that is effective in terms of uh, light and sleep and circadian rhythms. Yeah, so, I mean, I think to understand sleep, you've got to think of three things. So sleep is kind of like a balancing act of forces. Now, this is a gross oversimplification, and... Um, you know, in our podcast with uh, Matthew Walker, we're going to go into much more detail on sleep. But I like to think of sleep as a balancing act between cortisol, melatonin, and adenosine. So we'll, we'll talk about each of those for a second. So um, adenosine, if that sounds familiar, it's because you remember from high school biology that ATP, which is the currency of energy, is adenosine triphosphate. So the way to think about adenosine is it's something that gets built up the more energy you've expended. So if you were to measure adenosine levels in the morning and then adenosine levels in the evening, they should be higher if you've been doing something. And so that's the first thing you want happening when you sleep is you, uh, you want adenosine levels to be high. And in fact, that's actually how caffeine works. Caffeine keeps you awake by lowering adenosine levels. The second thing you want is cortisol. Cortisol has to go down. Um, and um, I, I've spoken about this a little bit before, but basically you have a, a, a cycle to cortisol. Um, so if the x-axis is time, and that's the moment you wake up, and that's the moment you go to bed, and that's your cortisol level. You want to wake up at a low level. And you want to go to bed at a low level. And what should be happening is in about the first two hours, you should have a huge surge in cortisol. Now, oh, for the listeners only, Peter is actually 
as luck would have it, there's an easel behind us as we're having this conversation. Oh, yes. Yeah, he's drawing this, yeah, he's drawing drawing this the cortisol out. cortisol pattern. And so you want to have this uptick, gradual down, nice and low at night. And just as you're waking up, it should be just about to kick off. So um, that's the second factor. So you want adenosine to be high. You want cortisol to be low. And then the third thing you want is you want melatonin to rise. And melatonin is uh, secreted by this tiny, tiny little gland called the pineal gland. And it is secreted in the absence of light, specifically blue light. And it's basically a signal to tell the brain that it's dark. So it's melatonin basically removes the breaks of staying awake. And that's where the glasses fit in. So if you're really trying to optimize your sleep, you want high adenosine. Um, you can accomplish that by not having caffeine and by being active. You want low cortisol. That's probably a, a, a lengthier uh, topic in and of itself. And then you want high levels or rising levels of melatonin.